Can you get a bargain hotel stay at Chessington World of Adventures? Well, tonight I'm at the Chessington Azteca Hotel where I've managed to get a room with breakfast for a very good price. So I'll be exploring what's on offer here. I'll also be spending a few hours at the theme park too, getting back on some of Chessington's best roller coasters and attractions and seeing if ride availability has improved since the start of the season. So come and join me for a night and day at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. Good evening from the Chessington Azteca Hotel. I've just checked in and I thought I'd give you a quick room tour of my room here. Let's have a look. So as you first come in, you noticed all the funky decor. There are monkeys climbing everywhere. You've got some really cool carpentry going on. And first thing you get on your left is a children's room. We've got um, two bunk beds. There's actually a pull-out bed down here as well with a TV and a safe. Again, like I say, monkeys climbing everywhere. There's like a tea and coffee station down here, wardrobe space, quite a nice bathroom. We've got a bath and a shower, which is always a bonus. And then into the main bedroom here where we've got a decent sized double bed. There's a random sort of storage box here, which is quite cool. I might see if I can fit my case in there later. A nice chair and of course, another TV and desk. Also a little mini fridge down here too, which is empty, but if I get a drink later, it gives me somewhere to keep it cool. Now we're into the off-peak part of the season. There are actually some really good hotel deals to be had, particularly if you're a Merlin annual pass holder, as you can access Merlin Holiday Club and get heavily discounted hotel rates. As a result, I actually got this hotel on a Wednesday night for just 80 pounds, which includes breakfast in the morning, as well as an hour's early ride time, which I believe is mostly gonna be the world of Jumanji area. So I'm gonna take you for a bit of a tour around the hotel Hotel. I'm in the Azteca Hotel, they do have the Zufari Hotel here too. They're actually linked by a bridge which I walked over to get into this one. Uh, there are some views that look out over the animal sections and there's also two restaurants here and some sort of splash pool downstairs. So if you'd like to come and explore with me, we'll go have a look around. There's a nice little outdoor patio here, the Maple Wish Fountain, a little seated area too. And then you can access the park in the morning from 8.45 to 10 a.m. via using this lodge gate here. So that's how I get into the park for my early ride time. And they also have the Azteca Arcade here. It looks like they're about to close it up though, but again, something for the youngsters to do. And this trail just seems to keep going. I think this will probably eventually take me to Zafari Hotel. Well, Savannah Splash is the splash pool. Obviously, I'm not going to film in there because there's a uh, there's families and things in it. It looks like there's quite a nice little pool in there. Got a nice bar area, Pac-Man. Can't go in with a bit of Pac-Man. And then you're into the main Zafari Grill. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? So I'm going to go and grab an evening meal at the Temple Bar and Restaurant. I'll try and get a little bit of footage in here. I do believe it's a buffet. But um, I shall let you know how the meal is later on. Well, plans have changed. As it turns out, a temple bar and restaurant is not actually open for my visit. I guess that is one of the downsides of coming during an off-peak and getting a cheaper rate, is that you don't get all of the facilities available. So, Zafari Grill it is. So this is the lookout bridge that takes you between the two hotels. Obviously, it's quite dark now, so you can't really see, but you can actually get views out amongst some of the animal enclosures from each side, which is quite a nice touch, and also cool that the two hotels are linked. Cool, look at that, evening sky. So this is the menu for Zafari Grill. And you do have the sort of pizzas and stuff as well. So on the surface, some of the prices look quite expensive there. However, with Merlin annual pass discount, I had uh, a starter, a main, and a pint of beer, and that came to £28 after discount, which I don't think is too unreasonable for a sit-down meal in a resort hotel. So overall, it was okay. I wouldn't say the food blew me away or anything. It was very much Aramark standard, but it was still fine. It was very much a sort of a, a six out of 10 meal, but for that price, and bearing in mind what I paid for the hotel in, in itself, not too bad. It would have been nice if the Temple uh, Bar and Grill was open and could have had the buffet option as well, but I guess with only a more limited number of guests staying, they have to prioritise one or the other. So in terms of the bed, it's definitely an older type mattress, definitely more spring-based than sort of nice temper memory foam or anything like that, but 
Hopefully it'll do okay for a night's sleep. I'm gonna kind of chill for the evening, have a bath, do some editing, and I shall catch you in the morning for some early ride time. This is not a flattering position. Well, good morning. It wasn't a particularly great night's sleep, if I'm honest, but up early. It's now around 9.30, so I'm using this gate to get into the park, and we'll go and explore some early rides. So a relatively pain-free entrance there through Azteca Gate. They are giving out wristbands. I'm a zebra. So let's go find out what rides are open. Cool, a proper message with your bearings coming in through that way. I was like, where am I? So, I'm gonna head in this direction. Head towards World of Jumanji. Uh, I haven't actually checked the app to see which rides are open, but I believe that's what they're offering for early ride time. So a few laps on Mandrel Mayhem is never a bad idea. I don't know about you guys, but I reckon there might be a sweet shop over there. Well, great to see that Dragon's Fury is testing nice and early. It is one of the more temperamental attractions here and Bolto one of my favourites. So looking forward to getting on that pretty much as soon as it opens. But first of all, let's go be a mandrill. Well, the sign says that Mandrill Mayhem is open, but the main entrance is closed. So I'm going to wander along the single rider line see what happens. I've not seen it go around at all since I've been down here, which is about five minutes, but dunno, let's find out. We've just begun a day there with three consecutive rides on Mandrill Mayhem. Right at the front, right at the back, and in row six, which gives you the most of the reverse spike going up from the correct direction, I guess. It's a solid roller coaster. I'm still not sure if it was the right decision, um, for Chessington, it is quite low capacity, which doesn't matter during early ride time because we, everyone was just jumping back onto the same train they got off. But uh, yeah, it does have that weird bounce to it. It is not the smoothest in some rows. Certainly row six, I noticed it was quite bouncy and rattly, but it's fun. You know, it is different to anything else we really have. Launched wing coasters are not that common. Um, the backwards section is quite cool, so yeah, happy to get here and get some rides on early, but now I'm gonna head to Dragon's Fury, which is still testing, so I don't think it's open yet, but we'll soon get a couple of rides on that too. There goes a mandrill. Always good to get back on Dragon's Fury, my preferred of the two Maurer spinners we have here in the UK. And that was a totally zen ride in that I was the only person in my car and that meant I spam quite a lot. So yeah, always good to get back on Dragon's Fury. I do really enjoy that. Isn't it strange though that Alton Towers, who also have a Maurer spinner, only introduced their single rider line this, this week and yet here at Chessington, you've been able to ride as a single rider for years and can just go on by yourself. It's weird, it's fascinating, but I guess every park does its own thing. So heading down into Spooky Town for some vampire action. It's not really called Spooky Town, it's Wild Woods, but that just rhymed. Anyway, vampire's good, so I'm gonna ride that. Five minute queue, let's go hang. <coughs> Sorry, having a coffin fit. Well, good as always to get back on Vampire there. It does feel like it needs a little TLC. It's rattling a little bit around the course now, and it did feel quite slow in some places. I think that may have been because the train was only a third full, although everyone was loaded towards the front, so you think that would give it enough drag to carry it through the course. But yeah, certainly towards the end, it really almost felt like it stalled out as you uh, came through this bit up the top here. But it's still a bit of a classic. It just needs a little bit of attention, I think. Well, logically, it makes sense to do Gruffalo River Adventure next. And what do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Do you prefer Gruffalo or did you like it more when it was Bubbleworks? I think most people still have that nostalgic pang for Bubbleworks. Oh, the smell in here is proper fragrant. In a, in a nice way, it feels like I've just walked into a body shop or something. Anyway, let's go take a river adventure with a Gruffalo. Even 
on quiet days, we're still stacked going up this uh, lift hill. It does take you out of the experience a bit when you're stacked on a lift hill just staring up at a corrugated iron roof. Well, it's always quite a charming and enjoyable little boat ride on a Gruffalo River ride adventure there. I think some of the theming aspects are really good. I always loved that sort of the glass projection thing with the snake and the mouse. I think that's really cool. And some of the sort of animatronics and things uh, are really well put together. I think that stacking issue on the lift hill is, uh, is a bit frustrating on a quiet day like today because it was a practically a walk-on, so they could have spaced the boats out a bit further if they wanted to without dramatically affecting the throughput, uh, but I guess they're told to operate it a certain way, but it does feel weird. You float around nice and gently, get this kind of whole storyline, and then you're just sat doing nothing for five minutes waiting for the lift hill to clear. Well, two roller coasters I won't be riding at Chessington today are Rattlesnake because that's closed, uh, I believe, due to off-peak, but it is scheduled to be closed all day according to the app and of course Scorpion Valley yeah, has been closed for the season I think we're still awaiting some news on whether that will reopen next year so a lot of things closed around here Mexico is looking deserted but let's go see if crop drop is working it is I can see it going up let's go and drop into a crocodile's gob Well, I've braved the drop and released the curse of Sobek. Unfortunately, Sobek was a bit annoyed about that and he retaliated by refusing to allow the ride gondola to spin, which is uh, obviously uh, quite a major part of, of these spinning drop tower. So it was just a drop tower. Well, a jump and down and up and down a bit. Um, however, facing towards London, amazing views of the Shard and Canary Wharf and all that kind of stuff on a lovely clear day. So well, there were some advantages, to, I guess, but yeah, not the ride experience that you expect when you ride crop drop. So hope they get that sorted out sooner rather than later because it does detract a little from it. Well, up next, I'm going to blast some tombs, which feels quite disrespectful, actually. I've heard stories of people who go into the tomb never returning. I actually kind of want that cat statue. Don't want the shoes though. Well, I've just successfully blasted some tombs. And I think that might be the first time I've ridden that since the Curse at Alton Manor sort of a uh, refurb over at Alton Towers. Obviously, back in the day, these two were quite similar with Jewel being a shooting dark ride as well. Um, I think this works quite well. I think it does the job fairly successfully. Sometimes the shooting rides can get a bit frustrating. You end up with just an achy trigger finger, um, but that's not too bad. I think um, the targets are quite responsive. You can kind of tell what you need to hit to get decent scores and stuff like that. You've got a couple of really good set pieces in there with the giant snake and the dog type creature. Obviously proper Egyptian vibes going on in there, but yeah, I think that's pretty good. It's quite well themed. That doesn't even work. Those little relaxed crocodile boats are really cool. Look, just lying on his back, having a chill, and someone comes and jumps in his stomach. So Tiger Rock is another ride which is not open due to the time of year. However, you still can wander around the land of the tiger. Well, what a beautiful pair of tigers those are. I've never been able to get up that close to them here at Chessington. I mean, that one there was like a couple of feet away from me. Amazing. Hey, I'm Lee Hampstead, and you should subscribe to Loop Theme Park Adventures. So let's head into Wild Asia. I'm thinking a ride on Cobra might be in order. There you go.
So a cheeky ride on Cobra is exactly what you expect from a Zamperla Mega Disco. However, it is really well themed. And on balance, I think Wild Asia is one of the nicest areas here at Chessington World of Adventures. It's a pretty well put together Asian feeling zone. I really like what I've done here. It's got proper like um, Animal Kingdom vibes. And if you can kind of even draw comparison with Disney on a theming level, then you're not doing too bad when you can't decide if you're a tuk-tuk or a minion. Well, unfortunately, Frazzle is hibernating for the season, so I guess I'll have to make do with some wheat crunchies instead. So I'm gonna call it a day here from Chessington World of Adventures Resort. And it's been a really nice sort of half day. I think the stay at the hotel last night was really good value. And let me know what you think down in the comments. 80 pounds for a hotel on the outskirts of London. I mean, even looking at alternate options in the area, I couldn't get anything even close to that price. The best I could find was about 93 quid. So to stay at an actual theme park hotel for that price, I thought was incredibly good value. And of course you do need to be a Merlin annual pass holder to access those sort of rates. But even on booking.com, it was coming up at like 89 pounds. So always worth doing a bit of searching around for those sort of things. I think the early ride time today was really beneficial particularly for getting those rides in on Mandrill Mayhem without having to wait, without having to go back around in the queue line. They would allow us to just jump back onto the train again. So I thought that was really good. Um, most of the rides I've been on today I've enjoyed. There are just quite a few that aren't operating, such as Tiger Rock, Rattlestake, Scorpion Valley, etc. And that does deplete the ride offering slightly. So something to consider before you come here to Chessington. I think this will be my last visit here for the year. So let me know what you think of Chessington down in the comments. And I've spent the last couple of days checking out Oktoberfest at Alton Towers and Thorpe Park. And you can watch that video up on the screen now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.